Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, brothers and sisters and my little friends in Islam. I want to tell you today about a man that many people don't know. And he is someone that is amazing. It's when I read about his story, I feel like, you know, wow, I mean, my mind is just really buzzing thinking about how great a man he was. He was the lion of the desert. And he was a man who persevered and went through all the persecution of people uh, who tried to take over Muslim lands. They were the Italians that wanted to control Libya. And so when they tried to do that, they destroyed Muslim homes. They tried to pillage and kill and rape and hurt and harm and steal. And they did really bad people, subhanAllah. They tried to do a lot of things. Not to say Italians are bad, but there's always a period in time, unfortunately, when many people unfortunately try to hurt and harm others. And many Muslim countries have gone through this imperialistic uh, tendencies of some of the European nations. And as a result, Italy tried to take over Libya and tried to control it. And so Umar al-Mukhtar, one of the great fighters of Islam, was born in Libya in the year 1858, alhamdulillah. He lived for 73 years. And at the age of 53, he started this revolution or this, this attempt to try to defeat the Italians until at the age of 73, that's at the age of 53, can you imagine 53, you know, you're becoming an old man, so why even struggle and strive? But that's what he did. He had, he had the strength about him that he was not going to give up. And so he strove against uh, the, uh, the, conc uh, the invading forces. And alhamdulillah, he tried to uh, defend Islam and defend the lands of the Muslims until at the age of 73. Unfortunately, he was injured in battle. And since that time, he was captured and he was then hanged. Unfortunately, they killed our beloved hero, Umar al-Mukhtar. Umar al-Mukhtar was the lion of the desert. He was a young orphan when he was born. He was taken over by the noblemen at that time under their care. And then he was trained in all types of warfare and trained in all types of, of uh, strategy, of battle and stratagems of war and about history and about literature. And so Umar al-Mukhtar grew up as a man who had lots of honor and izzah in his heart. And so he would never accept anyone trying to bully you and bully him. And, you know, when people are trying to invade your country, they're like bullying you. So imagine you're in your house and an intruder tries to come into your house. How do you feel? Do you keep quiet and say, look, I'm just going to let's let him go and steal what he wants? Or are you going to stand up and say, hey, you put my computer down. Bring that money back and stop doing this and get out of my house. Are you not going to stand up to him or are you going to be a coward? Are you going to be a coward? You see, it's all right to have fear, it's, but it's not all right to allow that fear to make you into a coward, right? Because even brave, brave, brave people feel fear. So bravery is not the absence of fear. Bravery is actually the presence of fear, but then overcoming that fear in your heart in order to do something good. And so it's all right to be afraid. I mean, I know I'm sometimes afraid of certain things, but then I need to overcome it. So how do you overcome the fear in your heart? So you could be, for example, afraid of snakes, or you could be afraid of, uh, of the dark or afraid of the heights. You could be afraid of the jinn, for example. So how do you, how are you going to, let's say, let's take snakes because a lot of people are afraid of snakes. How do you get rid of it? First of all, is to understand the reality. The reality is really important. Reality is that rat, that snake is actually afraid of you. That's why it wants to bite you. It's not because it's like, ah, I'm not afraid of you, I'm going to bite you. No, 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 no. It's actually the opposite. They're actually afraid of us. And that's why they're running away and going away, right? Because we're too big for them to eat anyway. So therefore, they're only afraid of us because we're bigger than them inside. So therefore, don't ever think snakes are afraid of you. Uh, are, are uh, you know, not afraid. Actually, they are afraid. So if they're afraid, why are we being afraid of them? You know what I'm saying? So don't let that ever catch you. That's number one. Number two, why not work on your fear by learning as much as you can about it? So why not do a project on snakes? Why not actually read up on snakes online? Why not read up on snakes uh, from the encyclopedia, for example, and re write a small article, look at a few pictures of snakes, and then you know that should be enough for today. And then in the future, for example, go to the zoo, 
and then from far away look at the snake hut for example I'm sure the snakes are, are housed in, in one area which is glass protected for example so far away you can just look and then go away next day for example stand at the door and then you know slowly slowly you, you break your fear and before you know it you'll be standing in front of the glass door where the snakes are housed Yehuti, you know what if we don't work on removing our fear how will we fear Allah if we don't work on removing our fear, we're going to have so many phobias and so many fears in our lives, we are never ever going to find courage. And if you don't have courage, how will you have sincerity? You can only have sincerity if you have courage. You're not afraid of anyone but Allah. That is why you are sincere to Allah, right? You cannot have sincerity without courage. And that's why you must develop courage in your heart. You must remove these phobias slowly, slowly. Look, I'm afraid of certain things. I'm sometimes afraid of heights. Sometimes, you know, some heights can be really bad. I know my wife's very afraid of heights. Uh, snakes, yeah, well, you know, doesn't scare me that much. I mean, it freaks me out. If, if you put a snake on my back, I'm sure I'll get freaked out. But it's not like, you know, I'm going uh, to be afraid just because there's a snake there. And if it's not going to hurt me, you know, bye-bye. See you later, you know. Uh, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, how do you get rid of it? I think most of the time we're afraid of something we don't know. So if we can learn about it, then we will inshallah find it's not that bad. So for example, you're afraid of the dark. How do you get rid of that fear? Very simple. Just slowly turn the light down, not all the way to dark because that would give you a fright. Get accustomed to less, 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 less light until almost there's hardly any, any light. And that's like not having light at, at all. So at the end of the day, it is entirely possible for you to be at peace and not to be afraid when, for example, when you close your eyes, you know that you know, you're know not going to have light. So why be afraid? So are you afraid to go to sleep? I know some people are. Inshallah, you're not. But if you are, then at the end of the day, work on your fear. There's no fear that we have except that we can conquer it by learning more about it. You know, uh, in, in, in emergency medicine, I'm a doctor in the emergency department. And you know, there's many things that are really scary, blood and guts and trauma and little babies dying and all that's really scary stuff. So, you know, when I was training to be a, a specialist doctor, one of the doctors told, told me something. They said, you know, Tofik, there's many things about emergency medicine that's really scary, really frightening, like putting chest, you know, tubes in the chest and those sort of things. Really scary stuff or a tube down your throat to keep you alive, so you can put air in it. Really scary stuff. How do you handle scary stuff? It's you learn more about it than anything else. So, so if you could know that, you know, for example, putting a tube down my, down my throat to keep me alive, that's called intubation, that freaks me out. Then what I should do is I should learn about that as much as possible. If I can learn about that as much as possible, then at the end of the day, no big deal, right? No big deal. I, I, know, I, know, I know what to do. I know as much about it as possible. And I know that my fear is unfounded. And so what we should do is if we are afraid of something, let's learn about it as much as possible. That's what Omar uh, Muammar al-Mukhtar did. He learned about the Italian invading soldiers as much as possible. And then that gave him courage because he knew their weakness and he knew how to control them and he knew how to defeat them. So if we can learn as much as possible about what we are afraid of, then that is one way to build courage in our hearts. Also to remember that ultimately everything is written. If people want to hurt you, harm you, or that snake wants to bite you, it's already written in the Loh al Mahfuz. It's written with the book with Allah. The ink has been dried up and the pen has been lifted. If it's already written, why even worry about it? And if it's, if it's therefore, at the end of the day, if you know that it's written, why are you so worried? Why not just go and do it? And that is why uh, uh, Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu taught, Umar, uh, taught Khalid and the Walid and he told him, he said, Ihris ala al maut tajid al hayat. You know, amazing. He said, Seek death and you will find life. This is what he said. Seek death meaning that, you know, the more you're afraid of death, the, the, the more death will come to you. But the more you seek the things you're afraid of, the more the opposite of it will come to you, right? So the more you learn about how not to lose money, the more you will keep money. The more you learn how not to lose your life, the more you will have life then, right? So the more you have uh, courage, the more you try to have that, the more you'll have the positive thing about it. And so, Ikhwati, we have no choice but to become of those people that are courageous. 
we have to become courageous. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allah loves the strong Muslim more than the weak Muslim, right? Strong Muslim more than the weak Muslim. And Allah says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu, idha laqeetumul ladina kafaru zahfan fala tuwalluhumul adbar wa man yuwallihim yawma idhin duburahu. And of course the verse continues in Surah Al-Anfal. Or you who believe, do not be of those people when you meet those people who do not believe in Allah and they are trying to hurt you and harm you, don't turn your backs to them, meaning be afraid of them and run away from them. Rather, do not be firm, stay firm and face your fears. This is what I want you to become. I want you to become brave men and brave women. And that is why I will end with that final statement of Umar al-Mukhtar. When he was being hanged, they said, is there anything that you want to say? And do you know what he said? He said, we are a people known as the Muslimin. We do not surrender. We either die or we win. This is who we are. And so he finished off by saying, Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. Zakallah khair. We are uh, for, from Allah and to Allah is our return. Inshallah until the next episode. I hope you're enjoying this stuff. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.